The Word Anathema and Its Meaning by Blessed St. John of Shanghai and San Francisco. The Greek word anathema consists of two words, ana, which is a preposition indicating movement upwards, and thema, which means a separate part of something. In military terminology, thema meant a detachment. In civil government, thema meant a province. We currently use the word theme, derived from thema, to mean a specific topic of a written and intellectual work. Anathema literally means the lifting up of something separate. In the Old Testament, this expression was used both in relation to that which was alienated due to sinfulness and likewise to that which was dedicated to God. In the New Testament, in the writings of Apostle Paul, it is used once in conjunction with Maranatha, meaning the coming of the Lord. The combination of these words means separation unto the coming of the Lord. In other words, being handed over to him. 1 Corinthians verses 16, 22. The Apostle Paul uses anathema in another place without the addition of maranatha. Galatians 1 verses 8 to 9. Here anathema is proclaimed against the distortion of the gospel of Christ as it was preached by the Apostle. No matter by whom this might be committed, whether by the Apostle himself or an angel from the heavens. In this same expression, there is also implied, let the Lord himself pass judgment, for who else can pass judgment on the angels? St. John the Theologian in Revelations 22 verse 3 says that in the New Jerusalem there will not be any anathema. This can be understood in two ways, giving the word anathema both meanings. Firstly, there will not be any lifting up to the judgment of God, for this judgment has already been accomplished. Secondly, there will not be any special dedication to God, for all things will be the holy things of God, just as the light of God enlightens all. Revelations 21-23 In the act of the council and the further course of the New Testament Church of Christ, the word anathema comes to mean complete separation from the Church. The Catholic and Apostolic Church anathematizes. Let him be anathema. Let it be anathema means a complete tearing away from the church. While in cases of separation from the communion of the church and other epitomia laid on a person, the person himself remained a member of the church, even through his participation in her grace-filled life was limited. Those given over to anathema thus were completely torn away from her until their repentance. Realizing that she is unable to do anything for their salvation in view of their stubbornness and hardness of heart, the earthly church lifts them up to the judgment of God. That judgment is merciful unto repentant sinners, but fearsome for the stubborn enemies of God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, for our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 10.31 Anathema is not a final damnation. Unto death repentance is possible. Anathema is fearsome not because the church wishes anyone evil, or God seeks their damnation. They desire that all be saved, but it is fearsome to stand before the presence of God in the state of hard and evil. Nothing is hidden from him. It is fearsome to fall into the hands of the living God. This is a tribunal of thought and movements of heart. Let no one enter tempting the unblemished faith, but in meekness and fear let us come before Christ, that may we receive and find grace for help at the proper time. This is of Palm Sunday Vespers.